Back in my review of Madoka Magica proper, I described the show as the home run queen of Maho Shoujo. Now, when it comes to Madoka Magica Rebellion, there ain't no joy in Mitaki Hataville, cause Madoka struck the hell out. Strike out in this case means it's watchable, but not terribly enjoyable. The movie begins with what appears to be an alternate universe, where all five magical girls go to school together, hang out, are super BFF, and kill monsters with elaborate games of patty cake. But that's BS because they're actually all trapped in the Matrix, I mean a witch's labyrinth. Created by none other than Homura. This is, of course, ultimately Kyube's fault. What a douche. Indeed. But he's ultimately outdone by Homura, who breaks free and becomes an evil version of Madoka. Then Fubars the whole world by screwing with the Law of Cycles. Rebellion is a Crisis on Infinite Earth style reboot of their universe. By the end, everyone's alive again and ready for more magical girly action. Which Homura will probably not be invited to as she's now all evil and stuff. Perhaps no one will remember. Actually, good point. I think the problem is that Rebellion doesn't know what it wants to do. Now, there's no rule that says magical girls can only do action shows. Rebellion seems to want to be a mystery with really deep character stuff going on. And to the movie's credit, it kind of works. All of the elements of the labyrinth are out in the open, but it's mixed in with enough normal stuff that you're willing to write off at least some of it. And the big reveal at the end is well earned. But it all falls apart at the ending. Rebellion pulls a reverse Ouroboros by disappearing right up its own. Some anime just have a bad habit of ignoring the rules of their world for the sake of an ending. And Rebellion does that in spades. First off, there's just the whiplash of Homura saying, <laughs> I was evil the whole time! Meh, I knew that. Now honestly, it's possible that she's either a Greek tragedy-style fallen hero, or an anti-hero who did what she had to do to create a better world. This is mostly because we don't know how the world Homura created works. Those wraith things still exist. And she plans on exterminating them, but is that even possible? Also, since Kyube is now under her black satin thumb, is the Law of Cycles now irrelevant because no new magical girls can be created? Or is Homura okay with him doing that? Oh, and the biggest problem, how is any of this possible? We know exactly how Madoka became the Law of Cycles, but this... This is a complete mystery. Well, anything to get back the status quo, I suppose. Alright, now let's look at something Madoka has always excelled at. The visuals. Setting the movie in a labyrinth was a brilliant move, as it lets Madoka revel in that sweet spot it's carved out, next to Alice in Wonderland, in the world of visuals that are strange enough to be charming and whimsical, but not so odd that they're disturbing. They get awfully close, though. Yeah, that's fair. In addition to the arts and crafts abominations and general surreal atmosphere, the series' trademarked action sequences are present and accounted for. My personal favorite was the fight between Mommy and Homura, but the full-on brawl with Witch Homura was a very, very close second. However, the early-on fights with the Nightmares were not very good and kind of strange. Also, as much as she's awful in so many ways, I do have to admit Devil Homura has style. She's wearing a slightly better looking version of Princess Krahe's costume. The extra bits like the wings and the choker really pull the look together. Now I want to look at Charlotta. She both is and isn't important here. Her job, narratively speaking, is to be the red herring for who created the labyrinth, and to give Homer and Mommy an excuse to throw down. Also, she's there because she's holding Madoka's memories along with Sayaka. They bend over backwards to hammer her into the plot, and it's an odd choice. Charlotta's hard to get to know because she spends so much of her limited screen time in witch form, which doesn't really communicate very well. She also has some bizarre obsession with cheese. Oh, that's simple. She returned to the human world to eat cheese again. Does she not refer to mommy as cheese? Oh. Oh dear. Finally, the soundtrack in Rebellion is very well done. The orchestra-style music is used to great effect, and it's punctuated from time to time with these haunting music box chords. And it's wonderfully creepy. The big battles have a strong triumphant score, but I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't utilize that ridiculously cool battle theme from the series. Also, Mommy humming her own theme song? That was awesome. 
Okay, now it's time to break down the good and the bad in Madoka Magica Rebellion. On the good side, the character interactions are great. The action is mostly up to the series' high standards, and the audiovisual elements are the good kind of weird. On the downside, the nightmare fights aren't that great. Charlotta's presence doesn't really work, and the ending is bad in, like, so many ways. So, I give Madoka Magica Rebellion a 3.5 out of 5. Now, if you're interested in more reviews of anime, movies, TV shows, comic books, or video games, check out my channel on YouTube at StupidPrivate913, or find my Facebook and DeviantArt pages for video updates and more. Thank you for watching. Hey kids, today's show is brought to you by the letter 4 and the number potato! I'm a stupid private.